Mahaba everyone. Week five update of Arabic with International House. Here we go. So adding to our family of Arabic alphabet letter groups is the pregnant group. So a couple of the characters resemble pregnant women, I think, when you look at them, maybe from a sidelong glance. Um, so the sounds are as following. So you have je, jim, and then you have huh, huh, huh. And that's deep in the diaphragm. So not too heavy, but that's where it comes from. And then you have huh, huh, huh. Um, more at the back of the throat, a bit more friction, so to resemble kind of K-H-A, if you can imagine that, when it's transliterated. Um, then you have ha, ha, bit of a harder H, as you can hear, so a bit more like the one we would use for hair, so ha, ha. And then we have M for meme. So those are the actual letters and their sounds. Something particular about this group of letters is how different their initial and their medial characters are in comparison to their final. What are these terms that you're using, Florence? Well, because they are writing from right to left, you know, just like we have to capitalise, they have to distinguish that movement by having different forms of the letter. Um, so what I will do is I'll put down these characters, both their initial one when they start at the beginning of a sentence, the medial one when it comes in the middle, and its final one. The final one also acts how it looks when it's a standalone, so we're just writing a list of them if you will. I'll also put down an alphabet chart because I think that will be quite useful, so I'll put down a link for that. Another aspect we learnt as well was the Hamza, which serves as a character, often paired with Aleph, which we know creates the elongated R, and when it's with um, Aleph, it, it makes it shorter as a sound. For example, you hear it in um, Ahmed, so it's not Ahmed, but Ahmed, and also Ibni, where it's shorter. Ibni means my son as well. So that's uh, week five, guys, and next week is the last one. 